This week on the Sportsman Experience, Jim is joined by his good buddy Alex on some of their home waters in Charleston, South Carolina. They're taking out the all-new Masters 247 in hopes that this beautiful bay boat can get them shallow enough to target some winter schools of redfish. I got him. You got him? Yeah. I got him. Alex two, Jim one. Just so everyone's clear. But Kiss him. He's going back. <laughs> Pretty little fish. Look at that tail. Mm -hmm. All right, where's the next spot, Jim? Well, they're trying to go up here. I got a real good catfish hole. Good job catching those last two fish. Yeah, players. man, there he goes. Taking out him slowly. Fishing is a lifelong passion. The pursuit of new species and lifelong memories is why we are up before dawn and coming home salty in the evening. My name's Jim Isaac, lifelong fisherman, boat builder, and student of the water. Join us as we bring along family and friends to pursue new waters, learn new methods, and enjoy our time together outdoors. Welcome to the Sportsman Experience. I'm always early. I better get some practice casts in for before Jim gets here. I just hooked the bush. <laughs> oh, there's Jim. Better late than never. Oh, hey there, Jim. I was a little it's early. So Trying to get a couple of practice casts in before we head on out. There you go. You're gonna need it today. Yeah, let's go ahead and get everything loaded up so we can get going. Let's get it done. All right. All right. Fish catching yet? You got anything else in the back of the truck? No, we're good to go. Okay. catch some winter reds. It is a nice cold morning. Let's do some fishing. This is an absolutely beautiful low country morning. The boat's in the water and the boys are headed down the iconic Shim Creek in Mount Pleasant. Shim Creek is known for its history in the shrimping industry. Full of shrimp boats to this day, it's the local spot for the freshest seafood in town. Growing up, I mean, this is like our home base. You know, I grew up, my parents' house is probably a block that way. We've always just, we've always come out of Shim Creek. My grandparents had a shrimp boat in Shim Creek. We, you know, commercial fished out of Shim Creek. It's just been such a great access point to get to all the fishing grounds that you need it to is, get to. It is, it's grown a lot. Back in the day, this whole creek was wall to wall shrimp boats. I mean, from the bridge all the way out, it was, you know, three deep shrimp boats and it's kind of, the demographics kind of changed a little bit. These guys kind of get hit with hard times, but I mean, there's still a few of them pushing along out here. Hopefully they don't go away and they kind of, you know, keep that lifestyle going. You know, kind of what makes Charleston great is the amount of shrimp that we have in here, crab, 
uh, you know, mud minnows, mullet, things like that, the bait fish that the bigger game fish go after. So Yeah, it's definitely a, a great estuary. That's what makes Charleston great, it's just all the amount of bonus of bait that we have in here that stays in here. It's low country living, man. So it's like right now we're gonna try to target just structure, just to try to find some of those schools, because they'll just sit on one dock and it'll be, you know, 50, 100 fish, it might be 30 fish, but you should never know. You kind of you know around. they're there by the first couple yeah, of casts. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so. Today we're fishing on our brand new Masters 247. Um, this is a newly redesigned boat for this year. We've got a, uh, a nice large casting deck on it. We've got the newly integrated D-tubing with the glass windshield enclosure. We've got the nice premium seats on this boat. Um, and then also we have the large rear casting deck with the twin aquarium live wells. And once again, this is the, our new 2022 247. Best selling bay boat in the market. Great family boat, great fishing boat. All around, just a great platform. Inshore, near shore, sandbar, you can do it all. So part of the goal today is getting out here on the water, show my buddy Alex, you know, some of the area that I grew up fishing, a lot of the areas around Charleston. Alex loves to fish. He just doesn't get to get out there as much as I do. I was able to grow up here, grow up on the water, you know, whether it's fishing on sport fishing boats or fishing in the creek in the John boat, we kind of did it all growing up. So it's nice to be able to bring somebody like him out here and, you know, hopefully we can catch a few nice fish along the way. It's like a bar two hours away from the old village and we had neighbors that let us come down here and fish every you know every summer i'd stay with my grandma and that's like our thing during the day we just go down on the dock and fish that's all we did that's so your whole life yeah that's been fishing this my whole life and like we'd go down there and we'd catch like whiting or redfish or trout or whatever we'd bring them back my grandmother was always you know she'd fry them up we had fried fish for for lunch like every day there's some crab pots out oh yeah we did crab and shrimp and i mean we did the whole deal get out here when you're in the woods or on the water you man you can't beat it yeah any any sunrise on the water is a great sunrise. that's a good day right there that's, that's a good beginning to the day you can't beat that all right now try making a cast just kind of right off that little grass patch that sits there i thought you were working on your casting this morning i think we might need to get a little bit closer yeah go ahead and reel, reel it in just give it a little whack they're probably pushed up against the shell rake if they have to be zing it Let me get up there and heave one in there real quick. Heave one in there. There you go. Try to blow one out. Yeah, I probably would have blown them out if they were in there. Usually, I mean, that water can't be that deep right there. No. Usually you can kind of blow the school and they'll hang out and just kind of get trapped in that little cove. But this time of year, you just got to keep moving around. Move around until you find them. That's what it's all about. Don't stay in one spot too long. That's what people get hung up on one spot. It's just you'll know run and gun. Yeah. <laughs> show up on the Garmin? Probably glass minnows, some kind of congregation, a little small bait fish. Kind of spread out, not very dense. Um, typically this time of year, that's what you get. Just keep moving, boop, 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 different sections. Different keep, squares, yeah. yeah. 
sometimes you find them at front, sometimes you find them in the back. It's like you just you never know. And a lot of times you get some like black drum and stuff in between. They'll usually take it and just roll with it too. Once they have it, you'll know. Yeah. They don't peck around with it. No, they'll pick it up and just start. I always kind of just let them run and then just kind of give them an easy pullback. Let them really kind of take it in. Yeah. It's all about, that's what's great about fishing though. It's all about just different tactics until you find something that sticks. Different spots. You just never know where they're going to be. I mean, these fish move around so much. I mean, a lot of times they'll hold into like certain little, like you find a little gully or something like that. I mean, you can get them to hold in there. You gotta get real skinny to get into a lot of the spots. That's the problem. Oh, there we go. There you go. There he is. Jim on the first fish of the morning. See, a little farther back. A little farther here. back. Big old redfish. He's uh, not cooperating. I got you, my partner. Big old stout sucker. He's pulling on you a little bit. Taking got some, some shoulders on him, yeah. Give them a little drag, let them play around a little bit. These, usually these guys in the winter are pretty feisty. He hit it pretty hard, he ate it. Let him run, don't overdo it. Just kind of play with them a little bit. Yeah, you see that net? Right Barely in, hooked, right in the corner. Right in the corner, just where you want it. Nice. Awesome job, my friend. Gonna lay him down on the deck. Great size winter red. There's the first one of the morning. Pretty fish, nice healthy fish. They have that black spot on the tail because it mimics the way their eye looks on the front of their body. So when they get attacked from behind, the fish has a chance to swim and get away. That predator misses the, the fish, the body of the fish, which is why they have the big black spot by their tail. Nice healthy release. And he's off. There we go. Good way to start in the morning. It's a cold morning so far here on the water, but things are starting to heat up. Jim got himself a stud of a redfish to start the morning, and this has the boys excited in hopes of some more big redfish and maybe even some other good inshore species. Just have that slow food. Mm -hmm. He pecked at that one for a good, that's probably maybe the same one you had had a couple casts before that you're like, something's tinkering. Something's fishy. Just let him eat it. A little puppy. A little pup drum. Pretty but fish. It though. still counts. A little juvenile. Still counts. They have nice color, the small ones yeah. too. Pretty fish. I had the huge the one that was pecking at it for five minutes and finally decided to eat it. I won't hit again. Right. Little blue hue on his tail. The blue hue. Yeah, all, that, all that casting paid off, huh? Finally it did. Put it right yeah. in the hole. That's right. There it should be. Off nice he goes. Quick release. Swim another day. All right, let's get back after it. Little puppy. Alex, you ready to move? Ready for the next location. Make a move, yep. All right, let's get one more cast and we'll uh, pull him in. Now, if Richie hauls out like the nine pounder from under the big dock. <laughs> All right, where's the next spot, Jim? We're gonna try to go up here. I got a real good catfish hole. We're, uh, we're gonna go down the <laughs> creek here a little bit and uh, head up the waterway. We're gonna look for some, some different structure. Um, pulled a couple fish off of that one. But I think we can find some more. Like I said, stick to this kind of run and gun strategy and just, uh, you know, make some moves. Wait on that tide to start flowing out a little bit. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely a slack tide today, which is kind of weird, but we'll uh, see some more guys kind of popping their head out here down the waterway. Um, yeah, we'll just kind of stick to the plan, move around. Sounds good, let's go. <laughs> Well, 
The boys, they've had a good start to this cold winter morning in the low country. With a couple of nice fish on the boat, they're headed out to a new spot in hopes that it will bring some more action to their morning. Today's tough just because we haven't been fishing in <laughs> months. You know, I mean, if you fish every day, you can come out here and bang on them. But, I mean, the guides obviously have an advantage because they're out here every day and they kind of feel out where the fish are and they know where their schools are. And I feel like in the summertime when you get a lot more bait moving and all, it's uh, it's easier because there's just fish everywhere, it seems like. Yeah, it's just tough. The ups and downs of the temperatures, fish are just more congregated. They're not really spread out. I mean, earlier in the year, you can kind of go anywhere and bump into some trout. This time of year, the redfish are just kind of they're not as widespread as they are in the summertime. So you just gotta find little little areas that'll hold them. Yeah, so this is kind of our setup we're using right here. Um, trying to switch it up, try to catch a little trout. Um, basically we're using a popping cork, probably 18 to 36 inch leader on there, 20 pound leader. You can go a little bit lighter than that. Um, it's DOA shrimp. Um, basically, it's supposed to mimic like feeding fish, just slowly kind of popping it back to the boat, um, get the fish to come up. And we'll see if it works. It's, it's kind of tough right now, but we're, we're trying it out, it's covering some ground, just kind of trolling down this bank and just working the grass line. Got to keep changing up locations, different tactics, you know, bait, lures, things like that. Eventually, you'll get on them. You just kind of keep on trucking, don't give up. Any day outside is a good day, so that's okay if it's slow. After trying spot after spot, the boys are seeing the true difficulty of wintertime fishing. At times it can be very rewarding and others can be very humbling. The small tide swings have water moving slowly and the cold temps have the fish pushed down. Though it's been rough since their few fish early on, they're not giving up just yet. Alex is taking full advantage of the natural structure and the ample amount of rod holders on the boat. I'm just trying to double up my chances to beat you, you know? We're all tied right now, one fish a piece. Yeah, we gotta step it up, man. As he's talking all that smack, I'm back here running two lines. Can't handle one line. <laughs> That's how it goes sometimes. Managing two rods is twice the work. All right, Jim, see if we can't pull something out of here. Sure, it's a nice big redfish just hanging out underneath there. Just ripping shrimp. Just ripping shrimp or a big black drum. I got him. You got him? Get I got him. him. Oh, don't bring him away from that stump. Yeah, there you go. Right when you did that, I hung up on one. Nice little, little puppy drum. There you go. A little bit bigger than the last one, but it's got a nice dark blue tail. Pretty, pretty, pretty red fish. Little one, he'll grow up to be bigger. But Kiss him. He going back. <laughs> that, was, that was sweet, he's sweet on him. So he'll grow up to be bigger, he can grow up to be like a nine pounder. Smooth looks. Very nice. Slowly picking at him. Alex two, Jim one. Just so everyone's clear. <laughs> Nobody's keeping count. <laughs> it's on now. Now he's now he's all feisty on the back of the boat. Now now it's on. Got me excited. See if now. we can get rigged up and catch another one. Okay. Yeah. Love that color. Pretty little fish. Look at that tail. Mm -hmm. Purple, Beautiful. blue, Look at that gold color he's got Beautiful. going on. Where's your daddy, little fella? There you go. Perfection. <laughs> Good job catching those last two fish, Yeah, buddy. man, there you go. Picking at them slowly. Sometimes that's what you gotta do. Slow and steady. After these last few fish, their luck started to run out. Winter fishing, most of the time, is more about taking advantage of a nice day, getting on the water, and less about the fish, as they're much harder to find this time of year. We 
about to wrap it up for the day. Fish have been kind of slow. Um, not much current, so the bite wasn't really there. You know, we picked out them, we got a few fish. I think we're gonna take the boats back, get them cleaned up, maybe go get something to eat, get a couple drinks, and just uh, call it a day. Get on them next time. Next week on the Sportsman Experience, Jim is mixing things up and testing out his skills as a middle school fishing coach. He's joined by redfish addict Show Owen, off. and they're going to be fishing the Brody Bates Youth Redfish Open here in Charleston, South Carolina. See, he's got that good fishing flow. That's what I work for. I'm trying. I'm trying to bring my fishing flow back for the summer. Oh, that little baby well, flounder. Baby flounder. <laughs> yeah, so it was a flounder bite. Look at yep. him with that big old minnow.